Good morning, everyone. As I always say, welcome to the Lord's house on the Lord's day. This Sunday here is it is the, actually the first day of the week. Sunday is the first day of the week. We usually think of Monday is, but Sunday actually is. And if you count back from last Sunday and you're going across on a calendar, today would be um, like an eighth day is what I'm getting at. If you start from Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's the eighth day. Uh, the church has always known Sunday as the eighth day, the day of new creation is what that means, that Jesus resurrected on the eighth day. He completed creation. So with that, I also want to bring to mind um, Psalm 100. Um, Psalm 100 says that we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Thanksgiving, that is a word I'm going to use in my homily today, um, the word Eucharist. Um, and you probably may have heard of that before, Eucharist, the Holy Eucharist. That's another name for the Lord's Supper. We call it the Sacrament of the Altar, the Lord's Supper, and the Eucharist. So Eucharist means Thanksgiving, if you didn't know that. So we are going to literally enter his gate, the altar rail, with Thanksgiving today. Very important day as we finish off John chapter 6 that we've been in, talking about the bread of life. Um, and there's also an old-time hymn uh, um, that goes, the Lord, well, this old hymn goes, I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. We, we say that a lot, too. And I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. So, speaking of hymns, um, I know it's hard when you're singing hymns. I, I do it, too. I'm trying to follow the music and then how the beat goes and everything like that. But the hymn of the day, um, you probably have never sung this hymn. It's called The Infant Priest was wholly born. Try to, as we sing those seven stanzas, to, as you sing, really pay attention to the words in that hymn of the day. They are just so profound, so theologically robust, and what they mean is just awesome. That's why it's our hymn of the day for today. Um, there are still room for ushers and readers. The sign-up sheet is still there by where you pick up the bulletins. If you want to fill in those spots to do that, we appreciate it. And other, the only other thing is uh, adult Bible study today is you can shift over to the room across the hall again. Um, we'll be doing it there today. All right. We're going to sing Children of the Heavenly Father. Isn't it good to be children of the Heavenly Father? Uh, that is most certainly what we are. So please rise as you're able as we sing our hymn of invocation, number 725, Children of the Heavenly Father. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? There is forgiveness. Therefore, you are forgiven. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, 
and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the company of the upright, in the congregation, great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal, eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated.
Good morning. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today's Old Testament reading is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 9, verses 1 through 10. Wisdom has built her house. She has carved out her seven pillars. She has prepared her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her female servants. She calls out from the highest points of the city. Whoever is inexperienced, enter here. To the one who lacks sense, she says, come, eat my bread, and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave inexperienced behind, and you will live. Pursue the way of understanding. The one who corrects a mocker will bring abuse on himself. The one who rebukes the wicked will get hurt. Don't rebuke a mocker or he will hate you. Rebuke the wise and he will love you. Instruct the wise and he will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and he will learn more. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As follows, we read responsibly Psalm chapter 34, verses 12 through 22. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their city. The face of the cry, the face of the Lord, excuse me, is against those who do evil, to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Affliction will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. The next reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 6 through 21. Let no one deceive with empty arguments, for God's wrath is coming on the disobedient because of these things. Therefore, do not become their partners, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth testing what is pleasing to the Lord. Don't participate in the fruitless works of darkness, but instead expose them, for it is shameful even to mention what is done by them in secret. Everything exposed by the light is made visible, for what makes everything visible is light. Therefore it is said, get up, sleeper, and rise up from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Pay careful attention, then, to how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless living, but be filled by the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus is our Christ, the Son. 
gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. At that, the Jews argued among themselves, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life in yourselves. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Because my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. It is not like the manna your ancestors ate, and they died. The one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Therefore, when many of his disciples heard this, they said, This teaching is hard. Who can accept it? Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were complaining about this, asked them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to observe the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? The Spirit is the one who gives life. The flesh doesn't help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some among you who don't believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning those who did not believe and the one who would betray him. He said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted to him by the Father. From that moment, many of his disciples turned back and no longer accompanied him. So Jesus said to the twelve, You don't want to go away too, do you? Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom will we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Maybe see it as we sing our hymn of the day. The infant priest was holy born, number 624.
Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom will we go? You have the words of eternal life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Over the years, I've come to have a sensitive stomach. I don't really know why, because I've been to doctors and had blood drawn, blood drawn, um, blood to see if I have one of those stomach diseases, you know. And I don't. All the tests come out good. And so aside from science, the logic has led to a common belief of it's a stressor. Stomach health issues have to do with stress. But none of us know anything about that, right? No, we all know about stress. I actually find it amazing, though, how some people can eat a mixture of food types with all kinds of different ingredients, right, and not get an upset stomach. I even know a guy who can have a couple beers at lunch or dinner and then immediately after that order a dessert and coffee. That would not do me well if I were to do that. We had some yummy spaghetti at our house this, this week, one time this week, and then after that we did have a dessert that we bought for it afterwards. It was chocolate cake. Just like a, a bunt cake, nothing fancy, um, it did have a light glaze frosting on it. But I tended, I did, there I remarked as we looked at it sitting at the table the entire dinner, um, I went to the children and said, because they wanted to, to wolf it down, like right after their spaghetti. They wolfed down the spaghetti first, they wanted a piece of it so bad, and I said, don't you want to, wait, wait a minute, wait for your food to settle. Or else, I said, I gave him an example, it's like putting that chocolate cake on top of your spaghetti and just eating it like that, right? Because isn't that how it ends up in your stomach? That was my diagnosis, since it sits in your stomach that way. And I'm not really sure they wanted to admit it, that it did upset their stomach or not, because it was just too good. Right, Tyler? The point is, food does different stuff to different people. And that's why we watch what we eat. A famous question is, what's your favorite food? What tastes good to you? And the answer to that question could be a dozen different answers. So many different types of food out there and ingredients. I also have experience in the I don't like that or that's yucky department. And that's called picky eating, being very picky. So many parents have a hard time trying to solve that problem, don't they? But we have to eat. It sustains our bodies, gives us energy from day to day, and one meal isn't enough. You have to eat every day. One meal won't last you your whole lifetime. I also, a long time ago, made up this little jingle for my kids that I haven't used in a while. But in teaching them, you have to eat in order to grow. I used to sing, eat, eat, eat to grow, 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 grow to eat. That's it, but yeah, I know I need to. I need to finish it someday with the added verses, I think. But this need for ongoing sustenance, when you're still going to die, Jesus reminds the people of by referring back to the manna in the wilderness. It is not like the manna your ancestors ate. No, this is a different, a better, everlasting sustenance, the bread from heaven, the designation for Jesus himself. No, the manna in the wilderness, because they ate it and they still died. But they, they didn't die because the manna was bad. They died because, just like you and I, earthly food doesn't keep you from dying. Not in the long term, anyway. Some food can make people get sick. Human beings can't just put anything into their mouths and not have their stomach hurt, right? And yet, even when we eat edible food, that isn't going to save your life, keep you from getting old, deteriorating, or make you immortal. So Jesus equates the manna to common food in that way. Even though God provided it out of nothing from nowhere for them in the desert, and yes, it was a miracle, it was still common food. Yes, the food was still kosher, but they still died. And this is why Jesus says in Matthew 15 that it is not what goes into your mouth that defiles you, makes you unclean or pollutes you, for that is common and needed. But he goes on to say, it is what comes from your heart that pollutes. And we'll get more on that in a minute. This text in John 6 is a hard teaching. It says right there in verse 60, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? And yes, it has all to do with the doctrine of the Lord's Supper. Theologians for centuries have been arguing this chapter in John, whether you can directly apply it to that or not. 
It is one of the most controversial issues that divides our fellowship with all the other denominations of churches out there. Why do you think there are so many denominations? Because, yeah, we disagree, and you believe that. Not every church believes that the bread and the wine and the Holy Supper is Jesus. For some reason, they have problems with Jesus saying, this is my body, this is my blood, when he instituted that meal. Although those are his literal words, this is my body, that is his literal words in every single language of the world, in every single Bible language ever spoken or written. They still to this day do not accept it. How does a person accept it then? Well, we have to go back to Ephesians 5 to answer that. Only those who are filled by the Spirit, it says. That's how you get to accept this hard teaching. Because Jesus said the Spirit is the one who gives life. And by the way, the Spirit is Jesus' Spirit, in case you didn't know that. The Spirit of Christ. The same Spirit you get imparted to you in holy baptism. And the reason we can say things like Jesus lives inside of me. Because you see, the flesh doesn't help at all. And we need to stop right there and flesh out this term flesh for a minute. The New Testament writers use this term flesh a lot, and it doesn't mean the skin on your body. Of course, the skin on your body or your body parts or bones or muscles don't help you get life or understand this hard teaching. The flesh is used negatively because it pertains to what the spirit of Jesus inside of you has to wrestle with, your mind, your will, and your emotions. So when the Bible says the spirit wars with the flesh, that's what it means. And that takes us back to the heart language point. That when what goes into you doesn't pollute you, but what comes out of the heart can. You see, the heart relates to the inner person, the mind, the will, and the emotions of your inner person. Whatever comes from the heart becomes the heart of the matter. And it could lead to joy or it could lead to bad problems, depending on what exactly comes out of your mind, will, and emotions. Because the mind, will, and emotions often have evil desires. And with evil desires, your life will be dark and fruitless, as St. Paul teaches. So that tells you right there we need to get our hearts clean in order to understand the mysteries of the faith. And no wonder the Hebraic mindset as well equated the heart of man with the stomach. They knew of stress back then and tied these inner factors to it and giving you a stomachache. So now when Jesus says, unless you eat my flesh, and he means body there, that is the word for body, and he says, unless you drink my blood, you have not life, he isn't promoting cannibalism. You don't go into the meat market, go up to the deli and say, yes, I'll take some of that honey roasted ham over there, some of that tenderloin you got on special, and lastly, wrap me up a half pound of some Jesus. Sounds ridiculous, right? We need wisdom to understand this discourse. You see, we can assert this is Lord's Supper talk in John 6, because take notice how John doesn't have the upper room discourse like the other Gospels do. No words of institution are found in John's Gospel. That's because he is the one that gives us the account of Jesus washing the disciples' feet on the night of the Passover. The talk of the meal is there, but it skips over when Jesus consecrated the elements. Take eat, this is my body, take drink, this is my blood. And John does that because he doesn't need to repeat the words of our Lord again. His gospel was written later out of the four. By the time John's gospel came out, the people already had the words of institution in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and also Paul using them in Corinthians. So they already knew it and what it was about. But John here gives us something the other gospels don't, the I am, the bread of life discourse to eat my flesh and drink my blood. So think about it. If you already, like us now, heard Matthew, Mark, and Luke, would the light bulb go off inside your head here when you get to John 6 and go straight to this is Lord's Supper talk? Sure it should. This doctrine is easy enough for a seven-year-old to get, who has been in the church for seven years of his life, anyway. It has been proven, it has been asked, not just by me, but others have tested this understanding of the baptized before. You see, I read these verses to my seven-year-old when he was at that age and asked, what is this passage talking about, son? And he did think for a minute, and this seemed he did, as if in deep thought about, okay, Dad, which part are you talking about? 
And so I repeated the whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood part. Oh, that's the Lord's Supper, Daddy. Bingo. See, we are privileged in a chosen generation to have the opportunity to grow up in the Lord's house. And even though you cannot partake of the Lord's Supper yet, to still know and understand what it is, what it is through faith. It is the faith given in baptism, the spirit that gives the knowledge and the reason of what this is my truly means. Jesus is once again forecasting the Passover meal that will take place with his disciples because they had a hard time understanding it. But by the time they are partaking of it, do you think they really had no clue by then? No, Jesus was prepping them for it all along. Jesus was warming them up. His words are his essence. The very smoke that comes up from the pit where everyone in the neighborhood knows you're having a barbecue, grilling out. His words are what turns your face towards that essence. They are fragrant words. Just like when you smell that barbecue, you know the brats are almost ready. It sounds foolish, this talk, to a lot of people, though. And it often offends some. But listen to what Paul has to say about that from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Brothers and sisters, consider your calling. Not many were wise from a human perspective, not many powerful, not many of noble birth, but instead God has chosen what is foolish in the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God has chosen what is insignificant and despised in the world, what is viewed as nothing, to bring to nothing what is viewed as something, so that no one may boast in his presence. It is from him that you are in Christ Jesus who became wisdom from God for us, our righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, who became wisdom for us. Christ is the very embodiment of wisdom. Therefore, Christ's body, his church, is wisdom too. His bride in him has built her house, prepared her meat, mixed her wine, and she has also set her table. And yes, that's what Proverbs 9 speaks to. Anyone inexperienced, enter here. To the one who lacks sense, she says, come eat my bread and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave inexperience behind and you will live. Living the Christian life takes being consistent, knowing how to walk, just like you had to learn how to crawl before you could walk in life. Just as in everyday life, you need to know how to not hurt yourselves. Don't put your hand on a hot stove or you'll burn it. Don't stick your finger in the electrical socket. You learn how to not injure your body and what your body needs and even what to eat. Likewise, pay careful attention to how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise, from the epistle, making the most of the time because the days are evil. Boy, you hit the nail right on the head with that one, Paul. Don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And what did we learn last week what the Lord's will is? That Jesus should lose nothing none that are his. Yes, it is possible for a Christian to fall from grace and become eternally lost again. As verse 66 states, from that moment, many of his disciples, that is his followers, turned back and no longer accompanied him. So Jesus asked the 12, do you want to go away too? And Peter makes confession, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe that you are the Holy One of God. The words that we have become to believe and know, those are action words. It actually is a perfect indicative first-person passive verb, if you're parsing it in the Greek. It is indicative, that's a statement of fact, a sign. To do this is to believe. So when Christ says, do this in remembrance of me, he is saying, to do this is to believe. Because the one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Remain. That is how you remain. So the one who feeds on me will live because of me, because of him. That's why it's a passive action verb, because it is indicative of the first person pronoun. And the first person is none other than the Holy One of God. It is because of him you have the words of eternal life. And it is because of him you can believe and know by the Spirit that he is the bread of life and what the bread of life means. Christian life is simply based on remaining in him and he in you. And the only way that happens is to feed on him here. To partake of the supper is to receive the medicine that you need that will raise you up on the last day. 
Those of you who haven't read our church sign out there on Passaic Street, try to stop by it and read it and tell me if you like it after you, after you get it now. Because this is the only medicine that can save your life. And it is fully approved by the administration of God the Father. Whoever feeds on Christ will live. Will live. That's continual action. And that's the heart of the matter. To believe it. Believe it as we teach from the catechism concerning the sacrament of the altar. But anyone who does not believe these words or doubts them is unworthy and unprepared. For the words for you require all hearts to believe. Remember, wisdom teaches us in Proverbs 9, verse 10, the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And this knowledge from the Holy One is not just in understanding doctrine. It is for discerning all things. And yes, even in knowing how to take care of your body, how you can discern from the knowledge of Christ in you the differences in the world of what is truly foolish and what is completely false. The unbelieving world doesn't have Christ in them. Therefore, most of what they say and do, do lead to disobedience and darkness, which knows not wisdom. So we must not let anyone deceive us with empty arguments and do not become their partners. Test everything they say and do. For whoever shuns Christ, disobeys his words, is offended by them, and therefore turn away from life. And on them God's wrath is coming. The days are evil. So where do we go? To one, we go to the one who are filled with the Spirit. The place where we speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music with our hearts to the Lord. Give Him thanks always for everything. Thanks is a Eucharistic word. That's what it means to give thanks. One of the names we call the Lord's Supper. So when we have the Lord's Supper, we are having a Eucharist together. We do that to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in that way, we submit to one another in the fear of Christ. Well, how about that term, in the fear of Christ? Does that mean you're afraid of Christ? No, the fear of Christ is not being afraid of him, but it means to flee to him when you're afraid. You actually want to talk about fear. Hear this. He was crucified for you. Now, that's scary. But he conquered fear, death, and darkness by his cross and resurrection. And that is why he can raise you up on the last day. In him you get his resurrection. And that is why Paul says when he has given communion to the church at Corinth after the words of institution, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Proclaim the death that wins life. When you eat and drink of him, you are proclaiming what he says is what it is, his body given for you, his blood shed for you. Not something perishable, no mere symbol or memorial, because that's what the manna in the wilderness was. But the true food and the true drink, wisdom has spoken. He is Christ. Let us give thanks together. Let us Eucharist. And in that way, we lift up our hearts. That heart will have no upset stomach. It'll take us to where we are to go. To eat, 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 to grow, and grow, grow, grow to eat. On the Holy One of God, dose by dose, and that takes us into the Feast of the Lamb and His Kingdom, which has no end. There is no other place to go and live forever. So why would you or go or do anything else? Today, church, is the time of salvation. So be filled with the wisdom of the Lord, wisdom itself as you partake of Him this day. In the name of Jesus. Now to Him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of His glory without blemish and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now and forever. We rise to confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, 
for the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May be seated. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father, we thank you that you have sent the great good shepherd who has compassion on his flock. In his name, we lift up our prayers for the family of God, for every nation, tribe, people, and language, and for all those who hunger for the true bread of life. Lord, in your mercy. Grant us always, O God, to work for the food that endures to eternal life. Bless the ministry of this congregation and our community that many may embrace Jesus as the Christ and believe that he is the true bread of God who has come down from heaven. Grant that we would never hunger or thirst for anything but Christ and his righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. Grant true unity in place of disunity, harmony in place of disharmony, and peace in place of violence, that the spread of your gospel may continue unhindered and the spirit of love abound. Lord, in your mercy. By your Holy Spirit, change our old nature into your new creation in Christ. Enable us to cling to your word and sacraments, that we may put aside the cravings of our sinful flesh and be clothed with your likeness and true righteousness and holiness. Lord, in your mercy. Protect your people, O Lord, from the impurities of this world. Save us from the violence outside ourselves and from hardness of heart within. By your righteous governance, preserve and guide the leaders of our nation as they execute justice in our land. By your Holy Spirit, change hardened hearts with the gospel, that true peace may be established. Lord, in your mercy. Bestow your power of healing upon the sick, especially Robert, Bob, Antonio, Glenn, Stephen, Walter, Ed, Oneida, Ed, Kathy, Shane, Larry, Marilyn, Jane, Elena, Michael, Nick, and those we now name in the quiet of our hearts. that in accordance with your will, they may give thanks to your name. Give your spirit of hope to the depressed, the lonely, and those who mourn the death of loved ones. Strengthen their faith and assure them of your presence in all circumstances. Lord, in your mercy. You continually feed your people, Lord God, not with what we want, but with what we need. You give us bread and meat to nourish our bodies. You also feed our souls with the very body and blood of our Savior, the true manna from heaven. Give us gratitude for your inestimable gifts and turn away all our grumbling. Lord, in your mercy. Within the fold of your tender care, O Father, we entrust these petitions to you that you might hear us, teach us your word, and feed us with the bread of life, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive our offerings at this time. You may bring them forward. Please rise for the offertory.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he, he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament and my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Given unto death for your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood. true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for the forgiveness of all your sins.
Christ now in you, the hope of glory will strengthen and preserve you in body and soul until life everlasting departs in his peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take your name, Ross. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for your sin. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for forgiveness of all your sins. Christ in you, the hope of glory will strengthen and preserve you in body and soul, and the life everlasting departs in his peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood. Of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Shed for forgiveness of all your sins. Christ in you, the hope of glory will strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting, depart in his peace. Amen. Please rise for the post-communion canticle.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our hymn to depart is number 813, Rejoice, O Pilgrim Throng. Fresh with the bread of heaven this day, the rest of your week, go in peace, serve the Lord.